Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is all about my top five best purchases I made this year, as well as the top five worst purchases I made this year and the products that I really regret buying. I feel like I spend so much time researching. Researching? What is wrong with me? I feel like I spend so much time researching the things that I purchase now that when I end up not liking something after I buy it, oh, it really, really messes with me. As you guys watch this video, please comment Comment down below what your best and worst purchases of this year are. Give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more. And a huge thank you to Sony for partnering with me and my channel on today's video. One of our worst purchases of 2021. I'm hesitant to say this, but it's the experience that made it a worst purchase. And it was this bed behind me. This is our new bed. And it's not really new to us because we ordered it back in May of 2021. And it just got here now. And I consider it a worse purchase because it took five full months to get here. And now that it's been five months, Pottery Barn came out with the exact same bed for $500 cheaper. What? <laughs> and then when this bed finally got here, I watched them unwrap it. They're putting it together. I'm so excited. And the headboard has like black, dusty, dirty fingerprints all over it. And the guys were like, we don't know how this got there. Like it was literally sealed up. You watched us undo it. And I'm like, what? is happening. They said to me if I wanted them to replace the fabric since it came dirty, that would take until next May. It would take a full year. <laughs> What a mess. My next best purchase of 2021 is my Sony ZV E10 camera. For all of my videos in 2020, I was using the Sony Alpha ZV1 camera, which is absolutely incredible. I use it for every single one of my YouTube videos. For every single shot in all of my videos, it's on this camera. So I knew when the Sony ZV E10 camera came out that I had to get it. Pre-2020, I was using a much heavier traditional camera and the camera cost me, I wanna say like $2,000 for just the body of the camera. I had to pay for each additional lens I wanted to use. I had to pay for a microphone to go on top of the camera. The system cost me so much money and my viewers used to complain all the time about the audio on my videos. They didn't even have a flip out screen. Yeah, I would have to hook up a mile long cord to my computer just to even see if I was in focus. Enter the Sony ZV E10 camera. This camera is honestly a content creator's dream. It is made for vlogging. It has a flip out screen so you can see yourself and ensure your shot is perfect every time. It tracks subjects, it tracks your eye. There's a product showcase setting, so it makes filming tutorials or filming reviews super easy. There's time lapsing. There's even a special dedicated button right on top of the camera so you can defocus your background to make yourself or your subject look even more clear while filming. It also has Wi-Fi for easy file transfer and super fast posting. As a content creator, you pretty much can do every single thing that you need to do all in this one camera. And now the Sony ZV E10 actually has the option in case you do want to switch out the lenses, you can. So if there's a specific look you're going for, like if you want to use a wide angle lens for a photo, you now can put that lens on the camera. If you're looking to get into vlogging or if you just want a compact camera that does it all, the Sony ZV E10 is for you. I have not looked back since I switched to using it and my audience has never complained about my audio since. I'm literally gonna sell my old clunky camera that cost me so much money that I hated to use because I am never going back. Wanted to say a huge thank you to Sony for sponsoring today's video. I have been a loyal user for the last two years and I really wish I would have had this camera back when I started my YouTube channel. One of my absolute best purchases of 2021 that I can't stop raving about is my Lululemon belt bag. I'm so glad that everyone thinks they're cool and trendy again because mom life over here was struggling before my belt bag. I was so tired of rooting around my kid's diaper bag, trying to find my keys, trying to find my phone. And then I would go to pick my child up or get them in the car seat and my crossbody bag would become a weapon and it would fall and slap them in the face. Yeah, that's super frowned upon in parenting. Enter the Lululemon belt bag. This bag is only $38 and it holds so much stuff. And this way, anything that I need easily accessible, like my wallet, 
wallet, my phone, my keys, things that I need quickly and I don't wanna sit and root through a diaper bag, I can just unzip and grab and I can do it with one hand, which is so necessary with kids. If you're looking for a functional bag, this is it. You won't regret purchasing this. I think it's cute and the price just can't be beat. Another worst purchase of 2021 was a Nectar mattress. I hesitate to talk badly about this because beds are so subjective. So like what I like may be completely different from what someone else likes. So I don't wanna like talk badly about this company because my husband liked it. This is one of those mattresses that comes in a box. You can't test it out in advance. It's a lot less expensive than a traditional mattress. But to me, that comes with a lot of risk because like I said, you can't try it out before you purchase it. My husband convinced me that we should try out this mattress, but I'm someone who has back problems. I have like diagnosed scoliosis. Sleep to me and like the kind of mattress I have is a really big deal. And I tried out this mattress. I could not sleep on it. We put like a very thick topper on the mattress, which is the only way I can sleep on top of it. Highly would not recommend it if you also have back issues or want to be comfortable when you sleep. It felt like I was sleeping on a pile of stones and that's not the way I wanna feel. My next best purchase of 2021 was also probably our biggest purchase of 2021 and that was our family car. We knew that we wanted a bigger car with having two small children and car seats, having strollers and all that goes along with having young children. We were like busting at the seams in our old car. So we ended up trading in my car and we got the Ford Explorer ST. We initially wanted to try driving a bunch of different cars like we had narrowed it down to probably like five or six different styles that we wanted to try I had never driven a bigger car before so I had no idea what I was getting myself into so I kind of wanted to just test the waters but it was impossible to find cars I'm sure you guys if you're in the market for a car right now it is so hard to buy cars right now there weren't even cars for us to test drive to see if we even liked the style like we wanted to drive a Kia Telluride and there was none within 25 miles not like none of the color we like. There was just none of the car. We didn't want to wait around with ordering a car because with everything that's been going on, it could be two years until you get a car. So the Ford Explorer was the first car that came available to us. I think we got a 2020. Like it had been used, but it only had like 2000 miles on it. So we got basically a brand new car, but it was less expensive than the brand new car had we ordered it. My big requirements were that I wanted it to be an all black car or as close as possible to an all black car because like, come on, I've given up everything that used to be cool about me in mom life. Like this is the one thing, okay, let me have this. And then I also really wanted to have captain seats for the car seat. So once we found a car that fit those specifications, we jumped on it, highly recommend it. We've had it for a few months now. It doesn't feel as big as some of the cars that I have driven. So if you are in the market for a new family car. I love my Ford Explorer. <laughs> Maybe you will too. I'm gonna make a generalization for this next product I regret buying. And it's pretty much every piece of clothing off of Amazon. Don't get it twisted. I'm not saying this about like reputable brands on Amazon. I'm talking about those brands on Amazon that are just like a bunch of letters. Usually they end up ripping their photos from an influencer and the photos don't match the clothing that you actually order and get. I've been duped one too many times. I just need to see stop ordering clothes on Amazon because the few times I have tried and been like, maybe this will work, it doesn't work for me. I think now that we're nearing the end of the year, I do know better. I can't do it anymore. If you guys have any bad experiences with ordering clothes on Amazon, please let me know down below. I wanna hear about it. My last top purchase of 2021 was an air fryer. I held off on getting an air fryer for so long because I was like, we don't need one more thing cluttering up our kitchen. And I was wrong. I will admit when I'm wrong. I absolutely love the air fryer and honestly the thing that I'm using it most for is making my toddler food. Chicken nuggets, french fries, the air fryer is incredible because you don't have to wait 30 minutes for your oven to preheat to make like four nuggets. <laughs> I just pop them in the air fryer, it's done in 10 minutes, it's way less cleanup, it's so quick, it's so easy. If you have little kids, if you have picky little kids, you need an air fryer. I can't believe it took me this long to jump on it. Don't be me. Get an air fryer. Actually wait till they're on sale, okay? Wait till Black Friday. Another thing I regret buying 
is the Stokey Trip Trap high chair. This might not mean anything to you if you're not a parent, but this high chair is very highly raved about. So I don't want to just knock the entire high chair, but every child is so specific and my child hates it. It's very expensive. It's like a $300 plus high chair. I had really high hopes for my son to use it because everyone touted that it was ergonomic and it was perfect for perfect positioning while eating and it grows with your child. Like it's supposed to be a chair you can keep for years. And I love that it matched our aesthetic and it matched our dining room but my son hates it and won't sit in it especially when my son was beginning to eat I feel like he needed a little bit more support and the chair is not comfortable at all so now I have a high chair that I need to figure out what to do with because it is just a display piece of furniture in our home because my son will not use it another one of my best purchases of 2021 is this organizing bin from Target you guys have seen me post these all over my content in 2021 I pretty much organized my entire house with this bin I also love that these bins are completely flat on the side. There's no lip, meaning that you can store them as close to each other as possible so you really can maximize every inch of space in your home. These bins are translucent, so they're not completely clear, so it really does kind of help to contain and conceal the clutter, but you still can see inside to know what is inside the bin before you grab it. I think these organizing bins were one of the top sellers for my channel in 2021 because I just rave about them so much. My last worst purchase of 2021 is this sideboard or buffet slash our bar in our house and I absolutely love this piece of furniture like it is very beautiful but I'm mad because I purchased it before we had really used the space in the house and that was because I wanted to have you know something to put our stuff in so I ordered something based off of what I thought would look good in that area this house is severely lacking on like closet space and storage and I wish I would have gotten a more substantial piece of furniture so I look at it and I just feel regret because while I like how it looks, I wish that I had waited to actually see how we were using the space before I purchased something for that spot because I would have purchased something different. Ultimately, I'm gonna need to end up selling that, but I just know that I'm gonna be losing money on it and I just got it within the year and I just, I feel too bad about it. So I will sit with my poor decision and think about what I've done every day for the rest of this year. All right, guys, those were my five best purchases of 2021 as well as my worst purchases of 2021 and the things I regret buying. Make sure to leave a comment down below with your best and worst purchases and I will see you guys next time. Bye!